Hi, it's Tim from M Audio here, and I'm going to show you the IK Multimedia Unosynth Pro desktop. Could this be your first analog synth? IK Multimedia is a huge company in the world of music. My original perception of them is that they make excellent plugins. One of my faves being the Miroslav Philharmonic Orchestral Collection, which is by far the most realistic sounding software I've ever heard. But if you check out IK Multimedia, they make way more than just plugins. They make microphones, speakers, pedals, interfaces, and even a huge range of clips and holders for live performances and synthesizers, which is why we are here today. The Unisynth Pro desktop is an analog synth in a compact size. You know it's analog because it calibrates itself for about a minute every time you turn it on. For me, this hits the mark as a perfect first synth with its price, its size, connectivity, and ease of use. Now, this is a paraphonic synth. This means it'll be great for basses and leads. It has three oscillators, a filter, two LFOs, filter and amp envelopes, inbuilt effects, and a huge modulation matrix. It has an arpeggiator, a sequencer, 128 presets, and a further 128 empty preset slots for you to create your own sounds. This desktop version is powered by micro USB. It has CV and gate in and out. It has an audio in. It has a headphone out. It has a quarter inch jack left and right out. And it has MIDI in and out. As an owner of two quality synthesizers, I honestly thought I wouldn't be too impressed with this, but I am. I found that there was way less menu diving than I thought. The buttons and the knobs are easy to get around and the layout is really well thought out. For example, having a cutoff and a resonance with their own designated knobs is really smart. The sounds are good and this flat key bed is a lot easier to play than you would assume. And the USB power, whether that be from a computer or a wall plug, has been way more user friendly than I thought. And in fact, I've come to love this rather than having some weird exclusive power plug. All these positive factors might be because IK Multimedia teamed up with a boutique Italian synth maker called Sound Machines to make this desktop version and the big sibling, the Unosynth Pro. That model has a 37 key keyboard with no difference in sound. Aside from the size, the keyboard and how they are powered, there's no difference. So rather than do a performance, I thought I would do a proper explainer. Starting on the left hand side, we have the octave transpose buttons. These flash when you've changed the octaves. Jumping down, we have the pitch wheel and the modulation wheel. The 16 buttons across the top change the presets and there's 128 presets to choose from and 128 empty presets to store away. Using the old button, you can change the preset banks. When you find the bank you want, you then press the old button again and press the preset button. The first two knobs are cut off in resonance and I really like that they have their own space. Then you have four control knobs that change depending what mode you're in. Then you have the data knob, which also has a button. To get out of the menu, you press back. Then you have a volume knob that works the volume for the main outs and the headphones. Here you have the edit grid. Starting with the oscillator button, you can edit the three oscillator waveforms and you can sync the oscillators together. If you press the oscillator button, you can tune the oscillators and change the ring modulation. Then there's the mixer section of each oscillator and the noise level. Then there's the filter section, envelope amount one, envelope amount two, spacing and mode. Here's one of the few hidden sections. Press the filter button again to change to mode two. Then there's the LFO section where you choose your waveform, choose your rate, fade in up to 10 seconds and sync on and off. Pressing this LFO button brings up the second LFO, wave two, rate two, fade in two and sync two. Then there's the filter envelope and you can clearly see the ADSR, filter attack, decay, sustain and release. Then there's the amplifier envelope 
attack, decay, sustain, release. Then there's the modulation matrix section for choosing the mod number, then the source, destination, and the amount. Then there's the effects section with drive, modulation, delay, and reverb. Here's the store preset button. You press it, then use the data knob to find where you want to store it. Press the store button, and you can use the data knob to rename it. Press the store button to save it. Press the tempo button and use the data knob to change the tempo. Press back to get out of it, or you can tap your tempo in. You can see the change of that on the top left. Press the voice button to access the three different voices. Use the data knob to scroll through them. Press the back button to get out of it and you'll see that on the top right hand side. Press the setup button to access all the global functions. Use the data knob as an enter button. Press back to get out of that. Hold simply holds a note that you play. The preset button is a different way to dive into editing. Here you can also rename and reset the preset. The arpeggiator, accessed via the art button, is pretty cool. It's laid out on the 16 buttons, representing 16 notes of a bar, and you can watch it move through the arp. You can tap the tempo in as you are playing too. Then there's the song button where you choose a preset you like and it plays a sequence. Then there's the sequencer, which is accessed via the SEQ button, and it's pretty easy to use. You press it, press record, hold a step, and play a note. And finally, holding the Alt button allows you to access the small grey secondary functions, like when you're using the sequencer, and to turn the power off. This is a great intro synth to synthesizers. Now I'm not saying that this is a cheap synth, I'm saying this is a good product to get you started into synths without breaking the bank or feeling like you were operating an aircraft. I haven't tried or seen the Uno Pro synth in real life, but I've grown fond of this little synth and I personally think I would prefer the smaller size for less room in the studio and to get a quick bass line or lead line idea down. I do wonder if they could make a polyphonic synth of this, as I really think that that would elevate this product and it would reach more people. You can grab one of these for about 759 Australian dollars, while the Unosynth Pro with the 37 key keyboard is about 1050 Australian dollars. I've spent a lot of time with this synth, so please let me know below if you have any questions about it, I'd be happy to answer them for you. Thanks for watching, make sure you like and subscribe below, and I'll see you next time.